Hey everyone, and welcome to 121 Overload. I am Peter, that over there is Matt. We talk about movies on this show. This is our monthly show, uh, which mm. we do once a month, as the word monthly would imply. That was very redundant of me. We're off to a great start. <laughs> but what makes this one special is that this is a, a voted for episode. I pick a movie I love, Matt picks a movie he loves. We put it for a vote for our patrons over at patreon.com slash TV, and they vote between the two for which one we'll do. And the winner of this month was Witnesses for the Prosecution, which was my pick, uh, which mm-hmm. was my second winner in a row. Uh, so we'll have to see if I can make it three in a row, because you did three in a row before I started winning. You had three mm-hmm. in a row, and then I won last month, and then this one. So, yeah, we'll see. I'm just saying, patrons, if that if that's what we're doing, if we're trying to like, keep breaking the streak into a bigger streak, then I need to win another one. And then ideally a fourth. I, I don't care what wins next, so you guys do do as you wish. I mean, it'd be nice to interrupt the streak now, because any time we can knock Pete down a peg, it's it's a good time. Uh, don't be silly. Don't be silly. See, uh, do you want Matt to be smug? Do you want Matt to be smug? So, <laughs> do you want Pete to be smug? Yes, which is do. his default. I, which is his default setting. I I am delightfully smug. <laughs> okay. <laughs> me being smug tortures everyone else therefore it's entertaining that is that is my stance uh, only only you and connor <laughs> I, when i'm not involved it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so we're gonna talk about when it's for the prosecution we will start spoiler free we will give you warning before we get any spoilers uh, of course it's a classic film uh, directed by billy whaler it's based on a agatha christie uh book uh, which is also a big yeah. play as well uh, if i did very that very proudly tells you that during the opening credits it, it says mm-hmm. based on a, the, you know, the, the stage production of um, but no so uh, we'll get into it but yeah so that's what we're going to talk about and this of course is a courtroom drama thriller if you want to even add on that word it kind of is it's, it's kind of thrilling in places mm-hmm. uh, but it's also very funny in places as well so you, you have uh, Charles Lawton who plays uh, Wilford Roberts he's this lawyer who's having heart problems he had a heart attack and he's, he's supposed to be like taking it easy not taking any big criminal cases and of course, he is just tempted to come back for this juicy murder trial where he believes yeah. the man is well, innocent. And what does he do? He takes what might be the crime of the the decade, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he he comes back, and it's all about sort of you know, it's a very rough case. Like he believes the defendant, but you know, the, there's not a lot of alibis for him. There's not you know all the evidence is stacked against him. And yeah, he tried. almost he wants the challenge because like he feels weak because of his heart stuff so he's like i'm not weak i'm gonna take Mm. this case that it doesn't look like i can win but i'm a damn good lawyer so let's do this yeah so that Uh that is basically the movie and to sort of go any further than that would be to start spoiling twists and turns as we discover throughout but uh yeah so uh i I, I obviously i'd seen it before because i picked this Mm -hmm. uh you had kind of seen it before no, I had seen it, but it had been a long time. This is one okay. of my mother-in-law's favorite movies. In fact, that's how I tracked down the copy. She brought me over her DVD. Uh, yeah. And she doesn't have very many DVDs. She has, like, Gone with the Wind, The Birds, and I think this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. Uh, she had made us watch it, me and my wife, my sisters-in-laws, uh, one time. And none of us were into it. We were all much younger. Uh me and my wife are just dating, and oh boy, we're like, yeah, it's it's good, and I ended up enjoying it, especially as it gets going. But I, th- I think that was a test, actually. I think she made yeah. you because you, mm-hmm. if you were just starting to date th- at yeah. that point, I feel like that was a test. Like, yo, you're going to like yeah. this movie, or you're just going to like yeah. break up with my daughter right now. I think that. Yeah, was the... she's like, oh, oh, you you went through film school, huh? All right, well, let me throw you this movie, uh, <laughs> and and yeah, and I stuck it out. Of course, I think I was the only. Of, of us kids that liked it the other ones were just like yeah okay whatever mom but mm. but yeah uh so I, I guess yeah that answers the question if you enjoyed it or not uh, i suppose <laughs> the better question now would be watching it again as a more grown-up yeah. adult person at least impersonating an adult i don't think you really are <laughs> yeah let's let's, i have never done an adult thing in my life on purpose so. <laughs> 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 only when you're forced into it exactly so um <laughs> Yeah, so so did, did it hold up? Did you like it more? Did you like it less? Oh yeah, especially as I feel like the older you get, the more drawn into courtroom stuff. Like my wife watches a lot of Dateline and a lot of Forensic Files, and this has just happened over like the last two years. Mm. Um, 
So, you know, we tend to watch more courtroom themed things. And this is almost like the pinnacle. I don't think it gets much better. You have like this and To Kill a Mockingbird, which yeah, came out yeah, five the, years later. Those are basically the two that are up there. I think, I think courtroom stuff can be done very well. I mean, it is great it is like fantastic there's a lot obviously yeah. there's a lot of mediocre stuff because it's one of those things where they try to just use it abuse it and overuse it and everything else yeah yeah there's a lot of it that's i don't want to say bad but mediocre and then i'd be remiss not to say throw 12 angry men into the all times but that's well that's not so much courtroom but yeah see, see i would actually put 12 angry men above both this and angry to kill a mockingbird but uh i don't know if i'd actually count it as a courtroom drama it's yeah. the it's the other side of it yeah, it's the jurors. It's not you're not with the judge and the prosecutor and defendant and and all of that. So, but yeah, I didn't want I didn't want to get the angry comments in the down going. How dare you? Oh not yeah, they're, they're very different movies. They're very very yeah. very different films. Um, but all three of them are, and they all do their kind of their own thing. This this yeah. is more of a straight, uh, twisty turny. Let's mm-hmm. try and work this out. But I think what was surprising me, uh, you know, it's been a few years since I've watched it. I'd kind of mm-hmm. forgotten just how funny Wilfred was. Charles Lawton's yeah. character, because right at the start of the movie, even when we're not at the case yet, you're just drawn in because he is making you laugh because he's being this disgruntled old man who's like, you know, a- angrily telling his his, his nurses carer who's there to look after him and is basically, but he, he he sees her as his jailer. So like, oh, you're not allowed to have cigars, yeah. you're not allowed to have brandy, you're not allowed to do this, not to do that. You go you go for a nap, you go for a nap in twenty minutes and you will not do anything else. And he's just oh. bickering. In fact. The moment that really cracked me up is after he actually sees the, uh, you know, the the the, the accused uh, Leonard Vole. After mm-hmm. he sees him, he's introduced to his. Uh... Oh, actually, that's no, before. He's introduced to his, his his chair, his lift chair, going up the stairs. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it's when he gets to the top, he's like, "Oh, this is not bad." And he gets to the top, and so like, she's waiting. Uh, Miss uh, Plimsoll is waiting up there, and she's about to take him to bed. He's like, "No, let me just get a feel for it," and he starts going back down again. Exactly, and yeah. the, the grin he's got on his face as he's getting away from her on this this lift, it was cracking me up so much. Uh, his attitude was great. But later on, after he's talked to the accused, and then eventually the police come up to arrest him. Uh, when the chief inspector comes in, he says, "Like, oh, you better check him. He might be armed with an egg beater." Yeah. <laughs> because a big part of the thing, of course, is that he's been trying. The, the, the guy's been trying to like, invent this fancy egg beater that he can sell mm-hmm. and and patent and whatever else. So yeah. no, his his attitude, his disgruntled, his even when he's in court later on, and he's 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 constantly just looking like he's annoyed at everything. But then he stands up and he just he does something really smart that makes the the the, the prosecutor look like an idiot, <laughs> and he just sits back. Yeah. There. Yeah, and he, you could tell that that character really, you know, there, there's a part, and then, you know, not to go little spoilers, where it's the classic, we've all seen it in courtroom, where it'd be like, yo, mine doesn't look like that, my shoes were blue. And he goes, oh, like this blue shoe? You know, and just the look, you know, it's almost like a shit-eating grin oh, yeah. on his face as he puts it together. And Lawton just, he's perfect at both the old man you know, and then the the over the top goofy guy. Yeah, so you know, we we hear that he was basically expelled from hospital early because he was too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, just everything about him, like he's because he, it's sort of thing that he could easily come off as an asshole, right? He easily <laughs> could do, but there's just the, the the performance is just tilted in the right way where he's a <laughs> lovable grumpy man. Uh, yeah. And he's, My favorite type of person. Yeah, he's very cheeky. In fact, honestly, I, I I saw a little bit of you in him actually. I could, I could see you being a little bit like this in your older age. That's yeah, With, without that's, the prestige and distinguished, you know, job of course, and of course. everything else that made him, you know, respected. Yeah. I, I could have been a lawyer, <laughs> but you know, I didn't want to. So. <laughs> yeah, I could have been an astronaut, but you know, I just yeah. thought, nah. We love someone else. <laughs> what are you talking about movies on the internet? And I have no time for that. If I'm sitting law. <laughs> So, so but, but yeah, and then Tyrone Power as as the accused as Vol, he he comes off, he's got this charisma, you know, and then so I did some digging into him and you know, he died shortly after this. Oh really? I didn't know, know that. Yeah, so he ended up himself having heart issues and this was one of his signature roles because he didn't have much. And it, it's kind of a shame because you could have seen him Almost up there with like the Cary Grants. Oh yeah, he he's very good in this. Um, I think uh, like obviously he, he's he's got like a really hard task matching up to Lawton because Lawton is just stealing yep. the screen every single second he's on it. But uh, Tyrone Power is uh, is very good as well as Vol. So mm. 
Uh, so that, that's that's all all good stuff. So good good performances. I, I think the plot is very twisty and turny, and obviously once they're in the courtroom and they start revealing things, I think all the little character bits are all the little, those uh, the, the the murdered woman, like her housekeeper, is a uh, kind of this you know the naggy old woman who just assumes she's right about everything and she's like you know mouthing yeah. off in court. Uh, you know, like just that interaction of Lawton and you know having her on the stand and you know questioning her and trying to make her trip over her own words. That's entertaining. So seeing them clash yep. is what's really entertaining. Uh, seeing them clash with everyone's entertaining. You know, when, when he's talking to Vol at the start, and when he's talking to the inspector, when he's talking mm-hmm. to the other witnesses, everyone, no matter who he's talking to, he just he's he's got a way of like getting to the information and just kind of. You always feel like he knows what he's looking for. You, you know, to, mm-hmm. to a layman, we're just sitting going, okay, we're taking in details, and maybe maybe we'll point out some flaws later on. But he knows the mistakes he's looking for. So as soon yep. as they they mention something, or as soon as they don't mention something, he's like right in there, and he's like, okay, right, well, this that means yeah. that, and that means that, and blah blah. blah. Uh, very charismatic. Uh, so no, very good. And obviously, Billy Wilder directed it. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I think uh, he's obviously a fantastic director. He's done a bunch of great stuff. He did uh, Double Indemnity, uh, The Apartment, uh, Some Like It Hot. You know, bunch of stuff. Lost weekend. Uh, you know, <laughs> very, very notable. Director. He's got a hell of a list of films behind him, and I think that th- this is up there with the best of them. But I think what's interesting about this one is it's it's the most kind of stationary in a lot of ways because it is mostly set yep. either in uh, in you know Lawton's chambers or it's set in the courtroom. And there's a, f- a couple of flashbacks here or there, but there's not a lot. It's 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 very very situational. Um, and I feel like by the time you get to the end of the movie, you, you know that courtroom at the back of your hand. You know where you know everyone sits that's important. You know where the mm-hmm. public are, you know where the jury are. You know Because it's, it's a very dense courtroom. A lot of people packed in tight. You know, I'm so used to yeah. the courtrooms in movies having like, the big open space where the, the lawyers will walk around making well, the case. Yeah, it's very dynamic, which, yeah. you know, and my, you know, my mom worked in the legal field, uh, you know, and she started in the courtroom as like a court reporter. So, or recorder, you know, she's the lady that would take notes for the judge and whatnot. So I had been in my fair share, you know, as a kid and they're very small. They're very much like this. So the fact that you do get that sense of space out of Wilder and it, and it's, I don't want to say it's not dynamic as an insult, but it's very, you know, static and it does its job for, you know, listening to Charles Lawton and you really get to key in on his performance versus all the different camera moves that, you know, which another director would have, Tried to do. Yeah, and to be fair, I think that's actually always Wilder's uh, strength is his character, like his actors. He's, yeah. a, he's a director of actors, and he he. I mean, he. Yeah. yeah but also, he made Marilyn Monroe. Like the reason that she was such a star was, you know, but beyond her looks, was Wilder knew how to use her, you know. And you go back and watch other movies where, you know, she didn't have Billy Wilder, and they're not. You know, they're not the same performance. Because I, I so, think ultimately a courtroom drama is a movie with people talking to each other and it's verbal mm-hmm. sparring and you have to yep. care about the 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 fight with words that's happening in front of you. You have yep. to care about the back and forth. And that's something where, you know, other movies, an action movie might be really good at the action, but whenever they stop to talk, it's, it starts to grind to a halt. Whereas this is a movie where the talking has to be great. That has to be the entertaining part because that's most of the movie. Um, yep. And I think it nails it. I think right from the get go. As soon as you're in the car with him and you know Miss Plim 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 Sol. Plim Sol. There you yeah. Go. I can to <laughs> say Plim Soil. It's not soil. It's Plim Sol. Yeah, yeah. Soul. Uh, like she, every every like, right from the go, it's just them sparring back and forth, and like mm-hmm. she's telling me can't have something, and he's he's like sort of mixing the words. I'll oh, get this blanket off me. Oh, it's, it's so heavy. Like no, no, no. You're just out from a heart attack. You better have your blanket. Yeah. Yeah, it's very much a back and forth, like a, yeah. like a tennis match, you know. Oh, you absolutely! Watch them, yeah. They there's, go there, and then you know, there's, there's a pace and a rhythm to the dialogue. It's, it's a very yeah. well written script in that sense. But uh, he, I think he gets a story by credit too, as well. Because I remember seeing that pop up in the credits. Uh, uh, it may, it may have been really just, well I don't know if it was story by because I think credits were kind of different back at this time period. Yeah. It was, well, he's listed under screenplay because they yeah. just pulled it up. Because it was like, so. screenplay by two people and then adaptation by yeah. someone else. And I was like, well, yeah. what's the adaptation then if the screenplay is not the adaptation? I wasn't actually sure what that what that distinguishment meant exactly. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, because one of the things I actually noticed, I noticed this in the credits at the start, is just how, like, in the list the DOP was, as if that yeah. wasn't an important job. And I'm like, no, the DOP should be like, you know, it's like, right, right under. Yeah. It's like after director and writer, the DOP is like the next most important person. 
<laughs> so you know, uh, and to be and to be fair, obviously even in our credits today they don't have them quite that up high ranking, but they're still they get their own title, they get their own screen where it says yeah. DOP or cinematographer or this person. <laughs> not not next to sound recorder. Yeah, you know? which, is, which is what I think it may have been in this in the list. <laughs> this director of photography, yeah. this person, they're like, yeah, they're the one who like makes it look good. <laughs> yeah, they're not important yeah. for a movie. <laughs> Why would they be? Oh. Uh, Michael Bay doesn't use one, right? Like, we can... <laughs> but yeah, no. But that's, like you said, the strength of working with the actors. Because then we didn't even really touch on Marlene Dietrich. And, and she comes in and, you know... Yeah, she's the just wife. She's the ice queen. And yeah. the way she's shot, it just... You could feel the frigid air coming off of her. Yeah, well, I, I think that's one of the things uh, with her is when she does come out of frame, when you first meet her... It is this static, empty shot. Whereas, you know, everyone else is introduced in pairs, or they're introduced with back and forth. But then she walks into the room, and silence happens. Like she, she, she says, "Oh, yep. hey, you must be this," and she's like, "Oh, who are you, madam?" And she's like, "I am the wife mm-hmm. of blah blah." And then it's just silence as they all realise who's just walked in the room, and it's like, "Yep," uh, you know. So it, it gives you that. You know, there's a different mood as soon as she walks in, and you know, obviously, we won't talk about spoilers and what she's actually up to. But right from the get-go, it's very clear she, there's something different about her. She's not this grieving woman who thinks her husband's been mm-hmm. false arrested for murder she, she's acting kind of weird there's a weird yep. reaction from her to everything they say and it's like okay so what's exactly happening here like you know what's like, up with her is yeah. is I believe as soon as she walks on the screen that's what you think yeah and so it obviously in, in a movie where you're trying to like second guess the script and say okay I bet this person did it or I bet that person did it she's like your first prime suspect you're like okay she's acting yep. dicey <laughs> like she's trying to set up yeah, a husband or something they- and then you go back and, and there's a flashback of how, how her and Vol met in Germany and she's almost a completely opposite character. She's this big, lively, boisterous performer hmm. and, you know, and it's just, it's the two, two halves. Which one's the real Christine? You know, is it this performer? Is, is the Ice Queen the performance or is the performer with the accordion the performance? Well, especially when we, we hear that flashback, it is te- technically told from a point of view. It could be a yeah. fabrication. It doesn't necessarily mean this is actually exactly what it right. was like, you know. So right. uh, there's, there's definite things at play there. Um, in fact, one of my only critiques of the movie might be that some of the the, the, the two like big chunky flashbacks we get maybe just a bit too meaty. Maybe just we just uh, yeah. pad out the runtime a little bit too much for me. That's probably my only real complaint with the movie is that. Yeah, but I, I understand why they did it too, and it, it's. I feel like it was of the era but, where, hey, we need a, a World War Two scene. And that's <laughs> yeah. our, you know what I mean? Yeah, especially given the tech, because it, it's set in, 90, it was made in 1957, that's when it came out, but they mentioned yeah. in the movie that it's 1952, I think. So it's mm-hmm. only been seven years since the end of World War Two. so obviously yeah. it's very, it's, it's fresh enough that a lot of people who are just walking around were in World, you know, fought in World yeah. War Two. Uh, exactly. So it's, it's that time period. Um so so no, I, 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 I concur with that. I had a point a second ago and I forgot what it was. Sorry. So, yeah. I'm blaming okay. you. I'm blaming you for all. That's okay. uh, <laughs> I'm so, used to it. <laughs> yeah, so no, uh so obviously it's excellent, is basically is what mm-hmm. we're what we're getting at. It's very, very good. Um I, I think it's worth watching. I, I think oh that's what I was gonna say actually. Is other than that, though, this movie flows like butter. And I say that is like because I was like, okay, I looked at the runtime before I watched it. Oh, it's two hours, okay. And then I didn't want to watch it because I love the movie. But it's just that kind of thing where you're okay, I'm going to have to sit down for two hours when maybe, like, you know, I'm not necessarily prepared to sit down for two hours. Because I feel like sometimes yeah. when you watch a movie just casually, it's because you just feel like putting one on and you don't necessarily think yep. about the time. But when I'm fitting it in for a review and I'm like, okay, I have to start watching now so I'm done by this time so that everything is you know, ready. Yeah, to... well, it's, you know, we've been re-watching all the Marvel movies, like, from the start, for the first time in a while, and that's what that is. That is, like, oh, I've seen this a bunch of times, I can do other things, Yeah. yeah versus right. something like this, where, I don't want to say it's homework, because it doesn't feel like homework, but you have to pay attention, you can't be doing other things. Yeah, there's, you wanna... a, there's a deadline to watch, and obviously we're going to talk about it, so you have to give it your full attention, because otherwise, yep. what would be the point of us getting together and talking about it if we were... You know, it was half watched while we're doing a crossword yeah. or whatever it does. That exactly. was really that was really old time. Nowadays, it's more like playing a video game, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, so, <laughs> unless you're Matt, who doesn't play video games. Uh, so... <laughs> but no, what I was going to say is, like, you know, at one point I checked the runtime. I checked the runtime 
basically when it got to the end of that first big section, and by section I mean kind of at the the chamber. So when Vol comes in, we get our big first meeting with him, mm-hmm. and then the wife comes by afterwards. By the time that that whole section ends, we're already thirty five minutes into the movie, and it does not feel that long. Yeah, it feels well, like we just got the the introduction scenes. I feel mm-hmm. like that's all we've had. But you look at the time, oh shit, it's almost forty minutes into the movie. Like yeah. they actually just made forty minutes fly by with essentially in one or two rooms with talking. And it never yeah. dragged. It was never dull. It just kept moving. Well, and it's because you like the characters, you know. It's like you, like you brought up Charles Lawton. Mm. You instantly feel feel something with this guy because he's fun, cantankerous. Uh, yeah, and, and, and there's, there's hijinks. He's trying to sneak a cigar, you know, yeah. <laughs> away from his doctor, <laughs> and he's been very very sneaky about how he does it. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's almost a, they almost front load it with the comedy, so they get you invested, and then they start the heavier courtroom stuff because i don't know if we talked about what he's accused of he's accused of uh murdering this this oh i think she was a widow right yeah she's a she widow a she's a bit, a bit older yet uh widow. who really took a shining to vol and uh for whatever reason left her inheritance to him and he insists that oh she just you know she she liked me and and that's that and she wanted me to to do what i wanted to do but it's like, well, that doesn't make much sense. So, yeah, it it's it gets pretty. I don't want to say pretty heavy because it's not nothing. Nothing like you know the last month's movie, something for Mister Vengeance, like <laughs> you know. But it 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 puts you right into the courtroom and it doesn't shy away from from the courtroom action. Oh no, you're you're absolutely invested uh, in mm-hmm. in the movie. So uh, I think we'll we'll give the spoiler warning so we can freely talk about yep. where the plot goes and plot elements and stuff. So. So full spoilers for the movie from 1957. <laughs> but yeah. still, I, I still believe in giving spoiler warnings for everything, no matter well, when it came out. so did this movie. This might be the first uh, spoiler alert. Mm. Uh, they, they wouldn't have called we, it that, of course, but yeah. No, but I, I forgot about that until this rewatch. And, and when it ends, it says, you know, thank you for enjoying Witness for the Prosecution. Please don't tell your friends uh, the occurrences of the movie. And I was like, wow, that's... That's really cool. Yeah, it was basically yeah, like for everyone else coming to see it, don't don't spoil mm-hmm. what happens. Uh, as it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's kind of bizarre, but a lot of the yeah. movie is about kind of unraveling what the the truth mm-hmm. is. So it's, you know, it makes sense. Like, don't don't spoil that. I think Diabolik had one too, right? Uh, kind of at the it, end. It did. I think we would have mentioned card. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's hilarious. You know, in our spoiler culture nowadays, where you put up a headline and it ruins an entire movie. Uh, and here it was all word of mouth, you know, yeah. and, you know, it's entertaining as hell. I feel like all movies should come with a sworn at the end, though. Yeah, I, um, the, the the mystery, of course, like, so the whole thing becomes this double bluff kind of thing, yeah. where you think the movie's called what it is, the story's called when it's for the prosecution, because the wife ends up showing up to testify for the prosecution, and... Yep. Uh, it claims that he did kill the, the the old lady. Claims that he admitted to it that he had blood in his his coat because of that and blah 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 blah. Um, and then like we, you know, Lawton gets this mysterious phone call from this woman who's all scarred and it's like, oh no, I've got these letters written by the the wife that, that she was mm-hmm. setting him up for the murder and she was going to confess like or make him confess to it and all the rest of it. Uh, and he does that that trick you mentioned earlier on where he like yeah. sort of you know it's like how do I prove this is actually her letters. And right. he, he hides them from her in court, pulls out a random bit of paper, his receipt from his dry cleaning or whatever it is. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, oh, I've got a letter here that you wrote about this guy, Max, and you were going to frame your husband for this murder. And she's like, that's not my letter. I write it on this colour paper, and I always have my initials what? here, like yeah. these. Uh, uh, you know, it's very yeah. smart. And, you know, then it's like, okay, so the, the jury finds him not guilty. And, it's, and what I think is interesting... Is that up until this point in the movie, you're know, like, is this going to end without us finding out who actually killed her? Because, like, no one seems to be concerned with that. It's just about, did he do it or not? And if he didn't do yeah. it, it's not about finding out who did. No. And, th- and that's kind of what a lawyer's cause is, right? They're not the ones out there trying to find the the actual killer. They're just worried about their client. Uh, but, of course, it, it doesn't go that way because we, <laughs> you know... We find yeah. out soon after. We get a double twist because obviously earlier on in the movie, Lawton told Christine that, well, I mean, Yuri's alibi, but honestly the testimony from a, a wife, for a, from a spouse, doesn't hold that much weight because you're yeah. likely to lie for them. It, it's, just, it's common and it happens. Um, and 
she basically devised this whole plan to go up for the, the prosecution and then have give him the, the ammunition to disprove her and that would make him look innocent. Yep. Which, though, if it's proved that she was lying, now she's on the hook, right? Yeah. So it's Although, a risk that they're going to take. Yeah, on the hook for a bit of per- perjury is uh, yeah. obviously less than a bit of murder. A murder. <laughs> so, but you know. still, I mean, it's, that's what she's willing to do for Vol, right? Is, yeah. And and then we find out he's a bit of a dirtbag. You know, Joe, you know I think is really effective about this movie is that the movie really presents it to you the entire time that he is innocent. That you really yep. believe him much, and it puts you in the same shoes as Lawton because you you're with him and you kind of believe him. He seems genuine. Everything yep. he's saying seems seems fine, and you you distrust her instead of him from the get go. He's always very likable, and but that's the thing. Like you, what you realize is that his his whole flashback with the old lady, all of that was a performance. He had he had to kind of win her over in the first yep. place. That was a performance. Uh, we know that Christine can perform from the flashback, so all of her stuff's a performance. They're performers. That's what they're doing. Uh, and yeah, at the end, we find out that you know he's got another girlfriend that he's going to go away with, and he's going to dump Christine. And he's like, "Hey, look, you help me. I helped you get out of the country of Germany, yeah. and you helped me get out of this mess. We're even. There we go. Done." Uh, uh. And he's going to leave, and you know his demeanor is completely changed. And then, of course, uh, Christine just grabs the, the the evidence, the knife, and the evidence on the yeah. table that's still there. And just stabs him in front of everyone, um, and it's like okay. And obviously, the big final point of the movie is that you know, lot in the whole movie, he, he keeps having to take more pills. He keeps having to, you know, like nurse yep. his health, all the rest of it. And it's like okay, after this case, you're done, and you're going on vacation. You're just going to go to a nice, nice resort. You're going to spend it the rest yeah. of your days relaxing. Get your feet up, yeah. And it's a nice thing because obviously the nurse, uh, uh, Plimsoll all movie he's been like angry with them constantly berating him for it it's very funny it's very mm-hmm. funny back and forth and during court she's got a little timer that goes off he's like hey you need to take a pill you need to take a pill you know and his assistant comes up and makes him take his pill uh, with what's supposed to be cocoa but he's actually snuck out some brandy uh, yeah. the sly <laughs> devil uh, so and at the end she's the one who like hands him his wig because obviously it's British court so it's the, the stupid wigs right. uh, and hands him the wig and says nah because we're not going are we and it's like nope I'm staying here and I'm going to like defend her because even though she did just murder him, like she has been wronged, and we can't get justice in the other way around. Because now, because now, because obviously double jeopardy, he can't be tried again right. for the same crime. And now he's dead anyway, admittedly, but still. Yeah, uh, there, there's that line about the scales of justice. He goes, they might tip one way, they might tip the other, but you know, eventually, they will balance out. Yeah, and and that's his, you know, rallying cry now to represent. Because well, that was that was the thing at the start of the movie. Um, uh, Vol brings up. Well, what about that guy who was wrongly convicted? You know, he brings up an example from the recent couple, past few years. Oh, he's, he spent five years in prison, but then they found out, oh, no, it was this other guy, and then he was released. And it's like, well, yeah, we released him and so on and so forth. There is mistakes that happen. It can be played. And that's kind of what happens in the movie is that he is yep. played. He's as good as he is, and he's played. And he's, he's almost trying to prove, prove to himself that he can still do this. And he does do it very well, but ultimately he did get played. And yep. I think the, the the final of the movie is kind of saying, "Well, I'm still me. I'm still always going to be doing this because this is who I am." And that's kind of yep. what you know the nurse realizes that you know he's not going to be changed, like because it's, it's what he says at the start. He says, um, "Well, well, you've got my wig with cotton, you know, mothballs. Right? Well, you know, if you can't let me do what I can, you know, I, I can't drink, I can't do any of this, I can't eat certain things, but at least let me do my work. It's, you know, something that's halfway important. Yeah. Otherwise, you might as well put me with some mothballs because you know." Yeah, then he's not himself. Yeah, you know, the... he's. Yeah, so. this is his identity, and I he sells that so well because I've never seen anything else with Charles Lawton, and this made me want to go check him out because he was very enjoyable in this. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I think um, because I, I think that's the crux of the movie. Has has uh his determination to keep doing this, and he, he keeps thinking it's his last trial. It's his last. It's the last time he's ever going to get to do a big case like this. And at the end, no, he's all about justice. He's all, you know, for as cantankerous as he is, for as much as he seems to, like, be a disgruntled old man, he does believe in what he's doing. He believes in these things, yeah. these ideals. So. Yeah. Yeah, he believes in justice in its purest form. And yeah. that's why I love that speech about the scales. Yeah, I actually, I love uh, when they get the new letters and the evidence, because like, it's meant to be the final <laughs> statement day 
and he yeah. actually is like, oh, I've got we've got some new evidence coming to light, and like the other guy like, like, hey, wait a minute, no, this is uncalled for. This is, this. And uh, he actually he has at the ready like four cases and books with bookmarks. He's like, you know, page one seven six of this one, case of this so and so, and then it gets to the last one. He's like, and you'll remember your honor because you were on the prosecution for that case. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, he's very good at what he does. Like that without a without a question and i like that trope in the lawyer movies like i kept watching this going well you just got lawyered you know and and i feel like i don't i don't know very many movies before this one that was structured like this with that gotcha mentality do do i like it from a a present day perspective is i like that it's from this time period where because uh, the the conversation that really brought this about for me is when they, they had the, uh, the 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 officer in talking about the blood because he because yeah. had a, he had blood in his sleeve and he claimed he cut his hand and obviously they were speculating that maybe it was her blood and when they were right. talking about testing it they could only get as far as to say that it, the blood was type O in both they didn't have like DNA to like say this is exactly right. this person like you know this is pre that. And mm-hmm. what I thought was fascinating about that is, A, it's just kind of fun to see it in a different time period where they don't have everything we have now to like solve the case. But it also means that it does rely more on the the, the, the raw investigative, like, you know, back and forth, the, the talking yeah. them into the like the traps, if you will. Uh, well, yeah, you, you set those traps and, and you know as a lawyer what you can and can't do for that. And he's masterful at it. And it's almost, a, you know, a shame that, this kind of, of law, you know, kind of fell by the wayside because of technology with the DNA, where in most cases, you know, sometimes there's, you know, they, it gets but away I, from just them. Just to clarify, you mean purely for yeah. movie and TV purposes, not yes. for real life. Not for real life. Yeah, right. Yes. Just, I'm just clarifying that because it, it almost sounds like you're saying, I wish we could go back to not having DNA so we could just, you know, yeah. guess. <laughs> I just, you know, if someone upsets me, I can just throttle them and that's it and be on my way. I don't have to worry about the DNA. Uh, but yeah, no, for because I feel like CSI has really killed a lot of this because everyone you know thinks it's it's that simple, and it's not. Like, it, I mean, and, it it can still be done. Like uh, me and Connor watched the night of. Uh, yeah. Must have been. Oh, I think that was mid twenty sixteen though. Uh, yeah, but it was an eight part series, and admittedly, it, it it sagged a little bit in the middle. But the opening episode where the crime happened was like one of the best opening episodes of TV ever. But the yeah. second best episode episode of that show of that season was definitely the final episode, which was the court sort of episode yeah. for the most part, and yeah. it was the final statements in. Uh, well, sure, uh, John Totoro is, uh, and he's the mm-hmm. lawyer, and he gives this speech. His his defense for the client is like so good, and it was kind of like it had been so long since I'd seen a good courtroom scene like this where I really yeah. cared and was invested, and I I was rooting for what was happening. And uh, that 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 show was largely also about just how even though he was innocent, like uh, like how the systems kind of screwed him up anyway, yeah. just because he had to go through it in the first place. Uh, whereas here, of course, uh, Mister Vol seems to be treated quite well, <laughs> and he's, he's, he's yeah not a care in the world uh, during his his stay, you know, in, in a jail cell for a few months. Or a few weeks, however long it took to get to the... Uh, that, yeah. that, that's actually one of the most uh, ridiculous elements of these courtroom movies, actually, is just how quickly they claim to get to the court after the crime. Yeah, so so fun fact about that, I was I was just thinking right now, how am I going to bring up my cousin Vinny? Because that's another courtroom movie that I love. And of course, it's not of this quality. It's a, it's a sillier one, but yeah. Yeah, but apparently the court stuff in that movie is so well done that it can be used almost like a textbook. Like a lot of the stuff that Pesci's character does, you know, they don't, real lawyers don't actually do because it's two by the book. Uh, And I remember reading that a couple years ago thinking, wow. And I gave my cousin Vinny a rewatch and it's, it's just as riveting, you know, as the first time I've seen it. And I think it's because of that, of, of the structure Mm. of, of the courtroom and whatnot. Uh, which starred Ralph Macchio. If you've not seen the Cobra Kai trailer for the Karate Kid TV show, I highly urge you to do because it's hilarious. It might not be intentional, but there's a scene in the trailer yeah, that made me laugh I've so heard. hard. Yeah. Let's just say I'm, there's I'm a middle-aged man it. fly kicking a teenager on the face, and it is so good. Well, I said no, a okay, spin kick. Then. It was a spin kick, not a fly kick. But uh-huh. regardless, it was hilarious. Uh, well, I, I, I'm back in. I, I was worried, but now I kind of want to see that. And and Ralph, uh, Ralph Macchio, you know Daniel from the movie, he appears to be more the villain in this, which is also amusing. Which also off of that meme, I mean, we're we're sidetracking a lot, but <laughs> whole internet meme that that uh, uh, what was the bad guy's name? Johnny. Uh, Johnny, put him in body bag. Johnny, 
he was actually the hero of the movie, and Macho came and was this little sniveling punk. Well, the, the TV show seems to be doing that. He, like, and that's what is cracking like me Matt, up. Like, you know? uh, Daniel's like a car salesman, and he's, he's doing like a TV ad where he's like karate chopping the, uh, like the, the, the prices. And he's like, oh, we're slashing prices, and he's <laughs> doing chops. Wow. But anyways, yeah, so my cousin Vinny and, and you know, courtroom exploits and whatnot led us to Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah. Wait, no you more. brought I thought of Ralph Macchio and, you know, yeah. So right, there he is. Uh, <laughs> Joe Pesci and Marissa T- Tamai. Uh, mm. Hot Aunt May, I suppose. <laughs> she, she's now known as. Yeah, so I, I think I just want to like, get, wrap up by kind of just just pointing out some more scenes in the courtroom that were really good. I mentioned the uh, the, the housekeeper for the rich woman. Uh, yeah. And the, the whole thing being that she was this old fussy woman who just basically just decided that he'd done it and because of that she like basically had this evidence she was like oh no i'd heard i heard them talking to her about her will he didn't know about the will he's, he's lying about that and when they ask about it she's like oh i was i heard it through the room and i heard he's like oh and so obviously a lot and asked oh what what did, what, what did you actually hear what, what did they say he's like oh i didn't hear what they said i just I, but i heard the voices it's like so you heard like murmuring you know over the wall uh, like all, all throughout the whole thing, she keeps doing this with her hand over her ear to like, sort of like, yeah. as if she's trying to listen. And eventually, he's like, "So uh, you need a hearing aid, don't you?" And she's like, "Yes, but they're not giving me it yet. The the bastards. Uh, do you know how dare they?" Yeah. And because at one point he actually he asks a question, but he phrases the end of it just at a normal level instead of shouting it, and she doesn't hear mm. it, but everyone else does. And he's like, he's, right. and for the jury's perspective, he's made his point. Like she she's she's decided that he he's done it when yeah. she has really no basis to say that. Yeah, it was pretty masterful on yeah, his the, part. The, the fact one. that she turns out to be ca- to be right ultimately is neither here nor there. But uh, no, because again, she had just made up the rest. She didn't actually know. It's not yeah. like she caught him red-handed. She, she, she was biased, and, uh, and he even points out. I mean, I actually think even without the money in place, she, was, she, she seems like she would be biased anyway. But on top yeah. of that, she was also the one who's going to get all the money <laughs> until she changed their yeah. will and gave it to him instead. So you know. Yeah, thing. I also like those flashbacks with the with the older lady and with Vol. Just you know, they're kind of madcap, and they're at the movies, and they're here and they're there, and like you said, it, it plays up his performance uh, as as this you know, oh, I don't mean no harm to anybody, and then you find out what he actually did. And it's like, oh yeah, well no, he's a liar. Yeah, you know, what actually, really went on. my favorite thing is show how slick he is and how much he plans ahead. It's a really simple little thing, but in the World War Two flashback when he's at the the club <laughs> and uh, Christine's doing the singing and dancing and whatnot with yeah. the, the recording, uh, when the fight breaks out, he puts his glass, you know, his drink, on top of this yeah. pipe on the on the ceiling, and then when everyone leaves, he comes back in. The, the place is wrecked, everything's smashed, but he puts his hand up, he takes it back down, and it's fine. He has his... <laughs> and it, it just, it's a it's a, it's a neat little way of showing you that he. He knows how to like plan ahead and like you know play yeah. around the rules and you know deceive and whatnot. So uh, very interesting. And it makes you even question like was he playing Christine as well from the start? You know when he was in the yeah. the her back room and giving her uh, like coffee and you know various things. He had like he, he had like a whole grocery store in his backpack. <laughs> it sounds yeah. Like. Oh, and it's instant coffee. And she's like, oh, you know, just like whatever. I feel like whatever she wanted to hear, he had back there you know yeah. uh and again it was almost like he's wooing her uh maybe because he's like, oh i want someone to trust me so she'll owe me something maybe it was all a con uh-huh. right from the get-go it could have been uh-huh. uh you know you know what he's like but uh oh, so i thought that was a really well done scene as much as i thought the 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 flashbacks did kind of slow down the pacing a little bit because you know because the fl- the, fl- I think the thing with the flashbacks were is that it wasn't the, the quick back and forth dialogue the same way that everything else was you know it wasn't as yeah the dialogue itself wasn't the sparring. It wasn't the verbal sparring. No, it definitely way. feels of that era. Yeah. You know, where there are these big kind of productions and you tell a lot of work went into this and there's there's lots of extras. And I mean, she's doing a song on an accordion and it actually looks like Marlene Dietrich is playing the accordion. So At least you know. well enough to pass for it. You know, so that it doesn't yeah. look wrong. Yeah. Exactly. So... You know, it's this big production, and then the the scenes with the older lady and and Vol too. Those feel of the era in a different way. You know, just the way that they're they're put together. And but yeah, um, I don't mind them though. I, I think they do add to the story. Uh, no, I mean I don't dislike them. I, I just think they they feel a little bit slower. And I would just maybe have 
just just sped them up a little bit. Just just cut just yeah. cut them down just a touch. But I mean that's yeah. that's that's about it. Because I, I think uh, what I like about the movie is so much of it's like I, I feel like if if we didn't see flashbacks and it was just we we just heard the stories. It was just again the dialogue. You know, it put us in the position of Lawton where he's not seeing these flashbacks. He's just, he's just hearing the story. Uh, yeah. But I, I guess I, the argument though is that. The flashbacks have been presented to us the same way that the story's been presented to him, in the sense that this is the right. the neat version that he's been told. Uh, so we, right. we get the effect of it through the flashback instead. And like I say, it works really well, and there's lots of things in the flashbacks I like a lot. I just uh, yeah. that is honestly my only critique is that they maybe slow down the pacing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But that's about. It. So uh, it's all it's all it's all very very good. Uh, so I, I guess we're wrapping up here. It's a uh, mm-hmm. uh, fantastic film. I guess uh, we'll see what we rate it out of ten. But Matt, what, what are you rating that as? Oh, this is a nine point five out of ten. Oh, bye. Uh, yeah, this is bizarre because right? you're actually rating it slightly higher than I am because I'm going with a nine. Yeah. Uh, there you go. But no, yeah. I, I definitely going into it. I knew it. I, I somewhat enjoyed it the first time, but watching it through for as I joke with adult eyes. I really liked it that much more. Also, I think this time yeah. watching it on your own really just soaking yeah. in all the dialogue, paying attention. You know, there's, there's no one else in the mm-hmm. room talking. There's no one else. To, exactly. You know, I I feel like um, it's a movie that, that deserves your time and attention because yeah. every single back and forth bit of dialogue, you're kind of just on the edge of your seat. You're learning mm-hmm. things. You're and and I love dialogue heavy movies. I mean, that's why I tend to rewatch Tarantino so mm-hmm. often. So something like this, where like you keep saying verbal sparring back and forth. It's fun to watch, almost as much as a fight scene. You know, it's not as oh, visceral. Absolutely, yeah. But yeah, you know. So, it, it, this movie's full. Of it, it, it's a real talent. Time. It is a real talent when you, you can have the dialogue have such a good flow, and mm-hmm. ha- have you just sort of riveted on its own. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like it doesn't happen too often, but there's a, obviously a set number of people who are fantastic at it. Wilder, I think, is one of them. Uh, obviously, yeah. I, I would maybe put in someone like Josh Whedon. I put in Tarantino. Uh, mm-hmm. It's people who can do that it very well. Oh, Whedon for sure. Because again, I, I mentioned going back and, and watching the Marvel movies. Once you get to Avengers, the characters are the same, but they have this different texture to them. You know, it was like you, you recognize them all from the movies before, but under Whedon's pen, you know, Iron Man's just a little bit wittier, and you know, Cap's a little bit more rigid in in, in that way. So I, I, I liked all the characters more after. Avengers yeah. than I did before, so, especially Cap. It, I, I didn't like Cap's movie at all. So of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Avengers but, uh, actually, you know, sold me on him a bit more, and then Winter Soldier did it especially. Um, yeah, and then that's a whole different take as well with with the Russo brothers, uh, with, with but they didn't write that, so that that was a bad example. I'm just saying the directors at this point, again, lack of sleep. Fine. But again, no, I think like as much as we're talking about writing the dialogue, I think the acting and the directing yeah. of that acting mm-hmm. uh, to keep that pace working, uh, to keep the edit yeah. going with it, everything about it, it's very punchy. It's very like as much as much as I say, I think the flashbacks maybe slowed down a little bit. There's no scenes in the movie themselves that actually feel that they drag or slowed. Like yeah. but everything has got a beat to it. Everything's got a pace. Everything's got a, a, a forward mm-hmm. momentum. It is exceptionally uh, well done. As much as it feels like a bunch of people in a room talking for most of the movie. Is mm-hmm. exceptionally well, uh, uh, just constructed to, to keep yeah. moving. Put, put, I always say just put together. It's, it's put together well, and it's more than the sum of its parts there. Because like you said, you could just describe it as people talking in a room, but there's more going on, so much more going on there with with all the performances by all the actors. and then Which I always appreciate. Direction. It's part it's partly why I like Bottle movies so much, uh, Bottle Stories. Yeah. And Bottle Stories being something that's set all in one location is because it forces the script to really make everything else work it can't rely on just all the exciting things that a lot of other mm-hmm. movies do and obviously they can be terrible but when they pull them off i tend to really yeah. like it so yeah uh, but hey so that is uh that is witness for the prosecution so by all means let us know what you think of it and if you haven't seen it by all by god go check it out find it find a copy yeah of witness for the prosecution and watch it because it's fantastic uh and a lot and this is actually the first wilder movie i think we've done on the on the any of the shows at all so uh, yeah. expect more of them at some point somehow some way yeah yeah there, there, there's one that's entered the i was like oh we can do this on overload mm. so 
So yeah. there you go. Uh, so yeah, uh, do all that. Uh, like, subscribe, usual stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv. You can do that over there. Of course, there is the vote for the next batch of Overload movies. We're actually getting towards the end of the month, so there's not a whole lot of time left. Uh, but the options, uh, Matt's pick was Easy A, and then my pick was The Burbs, yeah. uh, which is a Joe Dante movie with uh, Tom Hanks and a <laughs> small, small suburbs, of course, hence the name, <sighs> where they get some creepy new neighbours. And it's uh, delightfully eighties and charming. And I fun. love it. It's it's the right amount of madcap. Yeah, and yeah. Easy A is a lot newer, so you probably know what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's a a teen movie. After Pete had you know gone through the vault and watched Mean Girls, I went, oh, this might be a perfect time to throw this one in there. Uh, Which so means yeah. it's repetitive, so you should vote for mine. For something or different. Can, or you can hear me just go, you know. Gaga for Emma Stone because her character in Easy A is one of my favorites of all time. So, yeah. Yeah, you could sit there and feel uncomfortable as Matt inappropriately gushes over an actress. Uh, uh, don't act like you haven't watched our Molly Games review. So, come on, guys. Like, <laughs> So, what we need to do then is, is review Barely Lethal so you can act inappropriate about Sophie nope. Turner when she's meant to be a Not teenager. doing that. Not doing uh, that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that is us. Uh, so yeah, go check out Patreon and all that stuff. Uh, it helps us out a lot. But that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching movies, guys, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>